In our first segment, reporter Matt Williams learns how to give yourself the best chance to survive and escape disastrous weather with help from Wayne Hart. According to the National Weather Service, the severe weather season for the tri-state area is typically from April through June. Storms are considered severe if there are wind gusts in excess of 57 miles per hour and or hail that is at least one inch in diameter, which is roughly the size of a quarter or larger. Storm watches are issued by the Storm Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma, and inform viewers to prepare for a possible warning. Warnings, issued by the National Weather Service in Paducah, Kentucky, are in place to alert people to take action and go to their safe place. I recently visited Eyewitness News in Henderson, Kentucky, and met with Chief Meteorologist Wayne Hart to find out about the important role he and other meteorologists play in keeping our community informed, equipped, and safe. Thanks for meeting with me today, Wayne. My pleasure, Matt. Since the tri-state area is now in what is called the severe weather season, what is the difference between a watch and a warning? Well, a watch is issued when conditions are favorable for the development of severe thunderstorms or tornadoes. It just means that there's a possibility the weather may turn severe and it's a good opportunity for people to start planning ahead of what they would need to do in the event of an actual warning. And when a warning is issued, that means that we are fairly certain that there is severe weather occurring or is about to occur in a very specific area. And when a warning is issued, then you stop and take action immediately, especially if it's a tornado warning. And what constitutes as a safe place? When the warning is issued, do you take action and go to the safe place? What exactly is a safe place? Well, first of all, with a severe thunderstorm warning, the most important thing is just to get indoors. Uh, now, if you live in, in an area, a neighborhood that has a lot of large trees, I often recommend that even in a severe thunderstorm warning, you want to get to the lowest floor of your home, preferably a basement, because a large tree can slice right through a house, and it doesn't take a tornado to knock down a big tree. Uh, but for most people, without any big trees around their homes, get inside stay away from the windows and, and you'll be okay. Tornado warning though, obviously a much more dangerous situation. And in that scenario, you want to get obviously indoors immediately, but you want to get to the lowest floor of your home, uh, preferably a basement if you have one. If not, uh, you go to the first floor and you want to get in the most interior portion of that home. You want to put as many walls between you and the wind as possible so that if the tornado hits your home, it has to knock down one, two, three, maybe four walls before it gets to, to where you are. You want to get underneath something, like a, a, a big piece of furniture, a, a mattress, at the very least throw a blanket over top of you. Helmets are good. You want to protect yourself from flying debris. That's the, the number one uh, threat in a tornado. It's not necessarily the wind picking you up and carrying you away, though that can happen. It's these pieces of wood, glass, and metal flying through the air at 200 miles per hour. You need to protect your head as much as possible from all of that. Are there items that should be stored and kept at the ready as severe weather season is approaching? Well, I think the most important thing to have at the ready is a NOAA weather radio. That's your first line of defense in severe weather. It's like having a smoke detector. Uh, you don't expect a, a fire in the middle of the night, but if you have one, your smoke detector is going to wake you up. Same thing with a weather radio. In this part of the country where tornadoes are possible, it's important to have that that early warning that will alert you when you may not be paying attention to what's going on. So make sure you have a weather radio that's ready to go with backup batteries, programmed. Uh, most of them you can program specifically to the county you live in. Uh, so once you have that ready to go, then you need your safe spot ready. And it's important that the whole family knows that ahead of time. You don't want to tell your kids with two minutes to go in a warning situation where they need to be. They need to know ahead of time in case they are at home by themselves when a warning is issued. They need to know where that safe spot is. Once that's determined, you want to have in that safe area uh, something to protect your head, helmets, blankets, uh, something to get underneath if possible. And then in the event that you actually get hit, uh, it would be helpful to have a, a flashlight. Uh, a battery operated radio and that can be the weather radio if it's a portable one and you can actually take it into your safe area but uh, we also often simulcast our severe weather coverage on local radio stations so if you were to lose power if you had just a backup uh, battery operated transistor radio where you could listen to a local station and get the information in the event you lose power uh, so it's important to have that we also encourage people that uh, they have shoes on because if your home takes a direct hit, uh, first thing you're going to do after it's over is try to get out and there's going to be glass, 
wood all over the floor. And especially for nighttime events, people may not have their shoes on. And we've learned this in the Newberg tornado back in 05. A lot of people cut themselves just getting out of bed, trying to get out of their home after it was hit. So it's important that you have something on your feet so that you're protected in case you do have to walk out with a lot of glass and, and debris on the ground. What are the different types of radar used in the area? Well, here. Eyewitness News, we have our own, what we call first warning Doppler radar. It's an enterprise uh, Doppler radar that we uh, purchased and installed back in 1995. 250,000 watt unit. It's the most powerful weather, radio, weather radar in the television uh, market here in terms of, of what the TV stations own. So we have that at our disposal. We control that right here at our studio. Uh, and, and then we have the National Weather Service radars, the NEXRAD radars. And we've got several of them in the area that kind of give us coverage depending on where the storms are in the tri-state. The, the closest one that really services Evansville is located up in Gibson County uh, in, near the town of Owensville. That's the primary NEXRAD radar site uh, for this area. And the Weather Service has recently upgraded these NEXRAD radars to what we call dual pole radars, which now gives us more of a 3D look at what is falling so that we have a better idea whether there's actually debris in the air from a tornado as opposed to the old radar, which just showed us a lot of something in the air and maybe hail or heavy rain. But now with dual pole radar, we can, with a high degree of confidence, see tornado debris once it is in the air, which from a warning standpoint is very helpful because now we're no longer guessing is there a tornado on the ground. Uh, we know if we're seeing debris on the radar that this is already doing damage and it kind of raises the, the level of, of, of the alert. When people are watching the weather and we see rain on the radar, what exactly are we looking at? Well, you're, when, when you see the traditional radar screen, on Eyewitness News we use the colors of uh, green, then yellow, then red, then purple. And all that tells us is that something is falling through the atmosphere there. And as you go up the color scale, uh, it indicates that there's more of whatever there is falling. Uh, the intensity is, is, is increasing. But in severe weather, we also switch over to the Doppler radar mode. We always talk a lot about first warning Doppler, but we rarely show you the Doppler part of the radar because it's very confusing. Uh, the Doppler part of the radar actually identifies the particle that's falling through the atmosphere, but it also tells us whether it's moving toward or away from the radar and at what speed. It's the same technology that law enforcement use to catch speeders. They point their Doppler radar gun at the vehicle and it tells them how fast that vehicle is moving toward or away from their Doppler radar gun. Uh, we are obviously not looking at speeders, we're looking at raindrops or pieces of dust or whatever's in the atmosphere flying around. And if you've got a tornado, you're actually going to see that rotation on the Doppler part of the radar. The color scheme's entirely different, and we don't show it a lot, but in long form severe weather coverage, when we're on the air for an hour or two, maybe longer, and we're looking for tornadoes, we will show that to you. And I, I will clearly explain to the viewer uh, that we're looking for, in the example of our color tables, areas of red and, and blue side by side that are pretty intense. And when you see that, it's an indication that there's a dramatic shift in the wind direction and speed over a short distance, which indicates rotation. Not necessarily always on the ground, because keep in mind, as the radar beam travels away from the radar itself, it's getting higher and higher. So with a traditional radar, we're slicing through the storm above the ground. So we know it's spinning up here. We don't necessarily know it's all the way to the ground as a tornado. Flash flooding is something that's not considered severe weather, but can be very dangerous. Could you explain what a flash flood is? Well, a flash flood is a rapid rise of, of water uh, in a flood prone area, generally the result of, of thunderstorms that can produce a lot of rain in a short period of time. Uh, now occasionally you'll get into a situation where there's no thunder and lightning associated with it, but it's a heavy steady rain and that can lead to flash flooding also. But, but more than likely it occurs during thunderstorms, sometimes severe thunderstorms, uh, because the stronger the storm, sometimes the, the heavier the rain they're going to produce. The biggest threat is basically flooded roadways, where especially at night, when you have people that try to drive through a flooded roadway, they don't know how bad the flood is, how deep the water, and yet they will still try to get through. 
Uh, and we have a, a phrase that we use, it's real simple, turn around, don't drown, don't take that chance, because that's how most people die in flash floods. It's adults who should know better not to try to drive through this flooded roadway when in fact they do, especially if they got a pickup truck or something, or a big SUV, they, they've got these trucks because they want to go anywhere they want to go. That's why they got the truck. So they figure if it's a flood, well, I've got my big truck, I'm going to go. Uh, but in fact, you know, a truck can still get flooded pretty quickly. And if your, your vehicle gets carried away in a swollen stream or creek or river, uh, it's going to flip at some point, very, very difficult to escape, and people drown. Thanks once again for meeting me today to inform our community about severe weather. You're welcome, Matt. From the Eyewitness News Studio for the EVSC Community Link, I'm Matt Williams.